The sky was a cloudless blanket of bright blue serenity, disturbed only by the gentle, musical chirping of contented feathered friends scurrying from tree to tree. Dana, still in her housecoat, sipped her coffee, gazing mindlessly out the kitchen window at the best that a summer day in Chicago had to offer. She didn't even hear the knock on the back door just before her friend and neighbor walked in. Jesus, girl, aren't you dressed yet? It's gorgeous outside. Hi, Gloria, she said, turning to address her friend. Coffee? Yeah, I'll have a cup real quick. I stopped by to see if you wanted to come over and hang out by the pool, she said, sitting down at the kitchen table. Dana grabbed a cup from the cabinet above her head and poured the coffee. Yeah, sounds good, she replied, setting the brew in front of her friend. Gloria sensed something different. Dana seemed to almost lose her temper. It was almost a daze. Is everything all right, Dana? It's not like you to still be in your robe at 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh, I'm fine, Dana replied. I just have something on my mind, that's all. Well, you can tell me all about it by the pool. It's already 27 degrees outside. Go put on your bathing suit and let's go. Okay, let me take a quick shower and I'll be there in 20 minutes. I'll be waiting. Gloria finished her coffee with another sip. Don't be long, she said, leaving the way she had come. Dana went upstairs and showered, then picked out one of her more conservative swimsuits and headed toward her roommate. Gloria was already by the pool, stretched out in a lounge chair with a glass of red wine. The bottle and a clean glass stood on a small round table between Gloria and the chair reserved for her roommate. She didn't even bother to remove her sunglasses when she heard Dana's footsteps. Tim and I found a lovely little winery on Lake Geneva. It's one of my favorites. It's a fruity wine, try it, she said, gesturing for her friend to sit down. Dana poured herself a glass before joining her friend, stretching out in another lounger. She took a sip, then closed her eyes and leaned back to feel the warm sun on her face. Hmm, this is good. Hmm, she admitted lazily. So, what's going on, girlfriend? You looked like you were a thousand miles away when I walked in. Everything okay on the home front? Yes, she answered, not very convincingly. It doesn't look like it. Come on, spit it out. You know you can't keep any secrets from me. There was a brief silence in the warm air as Dana decided to confide in her roommate. Gloria, have you ever thought about having sex with other men? That got Gloria's attention. She took off her dark glasses and looked around. You're not having an affair? Oh, Dana, no, not yet anyway. Take my advice and don't do it. Jesus, Dana, if John ever finds out you're sleeping with someone else, it'll kill him. Uh, only after he killed me first. I know he'd be devastated. It would be the end of our marriage. That's why I haven't done anything yet. I love John. I would never want to hurt him like that. Then why are you talking about an affair? Not really an affair, just a change of pace every now and then. Don't you miss the variety, the thrill of having a new lover? Not really. Well, I know. I wasn't a slut or anything, but I'd had my share of men before I met John. Sex never got old because there was always something else going on. If I was feeling adventurous, I could go out, bat my eyelashes at some handsome guy and take him home for a little fun. I've been married for five years now. I miss the variety, the challenge. I take it John's not very good in bed? Oh no, he's the best I've ever had. It's not the quality of the sex. I don't know, it's always with John. Every time I look up after the finish line, John's smirking face is staring back at me. It was okay for a while, but it's gotten old. I love him to bits, but I really miss having different lovers. Dana, you have to be very careful. You said yourself that if John found out, it would be the end of your marriage, and men always find out what you're doing. I have a couple girlfriends who thought they could steal something from their husbands. Every one of them got caught. Yeah, I know. I think they're probably feeling guilty. I mean, how could you not feel guilty? I know I would. I think John would see it right away. One look at my face and he'd realize it. She took another sip of wine before continuing. If I'm going to do this, it has to be soon. John is talking about having kids. That would make things ten times harder, not to mention make me feel even more guilty. Then I would not only be cheating on John, but also on our child. Did you talk to him about it? You know, some guys like to watch their wives have sex with other men. Maybe it's his fantasy and you don't even know about it. No, you're kidding. We've talked about fidelity before. 
You can be sure he's not that kind of guy. If he was, this would be a lot easier. Hmm. What? I know you, Gloria. When you say hmm like that, you got something up your sleeve. Uh, well, uh, I was just wondering, what if you made your uncle cry? Dana had no idea what her friend was talking about. I don't understand, she replied with a confused look. Cry, uncle. Gloria explained herself. Yes, give him as much sex as he wants and even more. In fact, demand it. When he's home during the day, tell him you want to make love. As soon as he gets into bed at night, attack him. Make him set his alarm clock a half hour earlier in the morning and tell him that you need lovemaking to hold you over until he gets home. He'll probably like it, at least at first, but he won't be physically able to continue. When he gets tired and can't perform anymore, you start complaining. Dana began to understand her friend's plan. Yes, she said excitedly. Now I understand. I'll have him until he can't stand up anymore, and then I'll start nagging him. I'll tell him that he doesn't satisfy me in bed, that I'm frustrated, and that he better start taking vitamins or something. I'll go on and on about him. Hell, after a while, he'll be begging me for a lover. Yeah, Gloria confirmed. He'll realize you need more sex than he can provide, especially if you keep nagging him for neglecting his marital duties. By the time you tell him you want to have a lover, he'll be glad to be relieved. Gloria, you're a genius, Dana applauded. But, she suddenly became worried. Won't he figure it out? I mean, we've been married for five years. I've never needed this much sex before. Won't he suspect something wrong? As soon as I mention a lover, he'll realize it was all a setup from the start. Gloria thought for only a few moments before her devious mind came up with an answer. Complain about hot flashes. When it comes to female hormones, men are in complete ignorance. Tell them they're all out of whack and it's constantly turning you on. Hot flashes, hell, I'm only 25. He'll never buy it. Of course he will, she continued. Besides, do you really think he's going to look for an explanation? Hell, for the first two weeks, he'll be living every man's dream if he can keep it up that long, Gloria giggled. It's certainly worth a try, Dana admitted. Heck, the worst that could happen is that we'd have a lot of sex for a few weeks. I think I can think of worse things, she said with a laugh. Damn, all this talk of sex is getting me excited. I think you and I should go to the mall a little later and check out Victoria's Secret, Gloria suggested. Great idea. Yeah, something in black. I can meet him at the door wearing some sexy lingerie tonight when he gets home. I'm really starting to like that, she commented. Both girls giggled as they made plans to seduce their husbands. It was well past noon when Dana and Gloria got out of the pool and headed for the mall. They found the sales department for Victoria's Secret. They had discussed seduction techniques for several hours and already had a good idea of what they were looking for, so it didn't take them long before they headed home again with smiles of anticipation. When John walked in the door that evening, he was greeted by a woman who looked just like his wife, only this woman was wearing a short, tight little black dress. The kind women wear when they want to seduce a man. Her brown hair flowed softly over her shoulders and her green eyes sparkled. She crept over to her husband and put her arms around his neck. Welcome home, stud, her voice oozed sex. Hello to you too, he replied with a wide smile. John had no idea what had gotten his wife in such a mood, but he wasn't about to spoil it. He put his arm around her waist and pulled her tightly against him. By the time they finished their kiss, he was hard as a rock. Oh, someone's horny, she said with a chuckle. I think a couple of someone's horny, he replied. Dinner first, she told him. You're going to need all the food you can get tonight. She took his hand and led him into the candlelit dining room. So, how did it go last night? Hell, Gloria, I can barely walk today. How about you? Well, well, once I convinced Tim that I wasn't cheating on him. Cheating. What gave him that idea? Oh, he thought I was trying to make amends. Remember how we talked about how men can hone in on the guilt of having an affair? Yeah, well, Tim's radar was working overtime. He gave me the third degree within the first half hour. I was about to say forget it when I think he finally decided I was just trying to be romantic. What bullshit. Dana couldn't help but giggle at her poor friend. Was it worth it by the end of the night? Oh yeah, so it went well for you too? Yeah, if John thought I was guilty of anything, he didn't say anything. When he got home, there was a candlelit dinner waiting for him. I was wearing that little cocktail dress over my outfit. He loves me in that. 
When we went upstairs, he was in the most romantic mood. I could tell by the way he was touching me. He really loves me. I could see it in his eyes when he looked at me. We kissed a couple times, then he reached over and unzipped my dress. You should have seen his eyes pop out of his orbits when he saw what I had on underneath. He smiled and kissed me again. The kiss was so passionate that I didn't even notice him unhooking that little bra. When we broke the kiss, the bra just fell right out of my hands and onto the floor. That's when he picked me up. He picked you up? Yeah, just like in a movie or one of those love stories. Anyway, he gently laid me down on the bed, then knelt down and began to slowly unbuckle the straps of my garters. When he had undone them all, he rolled up my stockings, caressing my legs. After removing my stockings, he undid the garter belt. I lifted my hips slightly so he could pull my panties off. He'll go back and forth like this for a while and then he'll start to get more aggressive. By this time, I usually come again. Last night, he made me finish three times before he finally came himself. Shit, are you fucking with me? This sounds like one big love-making marathon. If you keep this up, he won't last a week. Well, he didn't stop there. He took a warm washcloth and washed us both and then lay down next to me in bed. It took me a few minutes to get back to normal. Shit, are you fucking with me? No, why? Jesus, Dana, Tim will be fine in about 20 minutes. How long have you guys been doing this? Uh, well, we went to bed around 9.30. When I looked at the clock before we cuddled up to go to sleep, it was a little after midnight, so I guess about three and a half hours. Gloria was stunned. Oh, come on. Well, we don't always go that long, only when we're both in the mood. Sometimes it's more like quick sex, like this morning. This morning? You mean he still had enough gusto to make another run this morning? Oh, yeah, I wish we'd set the alarm a little earlier. We only had about 45 minutes to fuck before he had to leave for work. Gloria was silent for a few minutes. She was too busy fantasizing about her own husband making love to her for three and a half hours. When she finally returned to the land of the living, she changed the topic of conversation and they left, discussing the neighbor four houses away. That night, Dana was still very pleased with what John had given her last night, but if the plan worked, she would get him in the mood again. It didn't take long for that to happen. Even without fancy lingerie, John was ready to show his beautiful wife how much he loved her. John never doubted his wife's sudden need to make love. He was more than happy with her day and night. Two weeks later, she had another conversation with her neighbor and good friend. Well, is he ready to cry yet, Uncle? Gloria asked. Not yet, no. Are you kidding me? You started complaining when he can't get up? It hasn't been a problem for him so far? Come on, haven't you been pressuring him to have sex all the time like we talked about? Hell yeah, Gloria. If we have sex anymore, I'll turn into a babbling idiot. He's getting used to it. Morning, noon, and night, he's there with his HHDR sticking out in his smirk. I swear I don't know how much more of this I can take. Dana, that doesn't make sense. You mean he never got tired? Sure, after three or four hours, but by then I was so tired I needed a break. Jesus, Dana, can he really take that long? Yeah, Dana snorted. Gloria found it hard to believe that any man could keep such a strict sex schedule as they were talking about. Damn it, Dana, who are you married to? Superman? No, although it almost seems that way lately. John told me that when he was younger, he practiced something called Zen. It's a kind of meditation. He also did a lot of yoga and some karate. He says all of this helps him focus. That's why he can stay solid for so long. Is he still doing all this stuff? No more Zen or karate, but he still does yoga. Well, he can't keep doing it forever, Dana. Sooner or later, he's going to start falling down at work. Just be patient. Later that night, Dana was in the laundry room and didn't hear John come in. After checking the kitchen and not finding the girl of his dreams, he went looking for her. He found her bent over folding clothes in the dryer. Without saying a word, he walked up behind her, slipped her dress over her back, and pulled down her panties. She cried out in fright. Shh, he said, putting one hand on her back and running his finger up and down her slit. Soon, she began to moan. John turned her to the sorting table next to them, and she bent over, grabbing the edges with both hands. Once she was wet, John unzipped the zipper on his pants and guided his buddy home. It was just past midnight. Dana snuggled against her husband's shoulder, still breathing heavily. 
No matter how many finishes she had, she had lost count. John rested peacefully with his arm around her shoulders, an endless smile always playing on his face lately. Honey, she began modestly. Yes, baby? Have you ever tried anal sex? The question shocked him a little. In five years of marriage, she had never even mentioned it once. Oh, yeah, a couple times before I met you. Why, what led up to that? Nothing much. I mean, it's something you and I have never tried together, and I'm just wondering how you feel about it. There's nothing wrong with me, darling. It's certainly firmer and tighter there, so it's kind of a blow to the guy, although it can be painful for a woman. That's why I've never brought it up. If you want to try it, I'll stop by that adult place I go to all the time and buy some lube on the way home tomorrow. She figured the pain in her ass wouldn't last long at all, whereas the pain in her pussy lasted all day, so what the hell? Yeah, even if we don't do it tomorrow, we'll have it on hand for when we're in the mood. That evening, John came home from work ten minutes later than usual. Dana said hello to him at the door to kiss him, but instead of putting his arm around her waist, he reached up and started massaging her ass. She thought it was a little weird before he pulled a bag of Arnaz out of his pocket. In case you're in the mood, I have lube. Hey, it rhymes, he laughed. Dinner's almost ready, honey. Later, okay? Sure, baby, I'm ready when you are. I'll run upstairs and put it in the nightstand drawer. During dinner, Dana began to think that Gloria's plan wasn't as good as they thought. John showed no signs of even slowing down, let alone being unable to pick it up. Later that night, her poor pussy needed a reprieve, but she still wasn't ready to throw in the towel. Where did you put the lube, darling? She asked, hoping to spare her pussy. It's on your side, in the drawer, he told her. He reached in and pulled out a tube and held it out to his girlfriend. Here, he said, taking the pillow. Scoot over and let me put this under your belly. Dana finally recovered enough to say something. Wow. I never thought you'd like that, John replied. Oh, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't want to do it all the time, but I wouldn't mind doing it once in a while. That's fine with me, honey. At Dana's request, she and John had anal sex two more times that week. The following week, she crossed the street to her neighbor's house. Okay, that was your brilliant idea. Now tell me how to stop it, she rebuked. Gloria was a little surprised at her friend's tone. What? You're not telling me he's still hot and hard? Gloria, my pussy hurts. My ass hurts. It's not working. Ass? You guys do anal? Yeah, but I had to figure out some way to give my pussy a little reprieve. What was it like? Did you like it? It was different. He was very gentle, so it never really hurt. Gloria could only dream of being in her roommate's shoes. Maybe I can get Tim to switch places, she thought out loud. What? Don't even think about it. John's mine. I'm not sharing him with anyone. Oh, right, of course, I was just kidding, she replied, trying to redeem herself. So what the hell am I supposed to do? I can't do this anymore, Gloria. If I start refusing sex now, he's going to wonder. He'll probably think I'm having an affair or something. Just tell him the truth, Gloria said. Oh, yeah, tell him that this whole thing was an elaborate plan to get him to say that I could have sex with other guys, yeah? Great idea. No, that's not what I meant. Just tell him that although the last six weeks have been great, your pussy hurts and you need to relax a little, that's all. Dana sat back and thought about it. Yes, he'd probably be disappointed, but I don't think he'd be angry. Of course he won't. He loves you. He doesn't want to hurt you. And you can always tell him if he gets really horny and you're not in the mood, he can come to me. Dana didn't say anything, just threw her friend a look that would have killed Genghis Khan and half his army. Well. It all started with you wanting to have sex with other guys, remember? Yeah, I want sex with other guys, not him with other women. That's not going to happen, Gloria, so drop it. I know, I know. What about you? Are you still thinking about seeing other guys behind his back? Are you kidding me? Never. What the hell kind of excuse would I have if he ever found out? Hell no, I like what I've got. Hmm, Gloria moaned, staring into space. Maybe I should go out and diversify a little. You? Didn't you tell me not to do this in the first place? That men always have a way of finding out? Yeah, I know. I just wish Tim would be a little more interested. I have to practically attack him when I'm in the mood. And even then, it's nothing like you and John. On a really good night, 
Tim can be good for 35 or 40 minutes. Then what are you doing? What do you mean when I roll over on my other side and fall asleep? What else is there to do? Maybe try a few other positions. Try something different. Maybe a few more outfits that have worked before. Yeah, I could try that. Why not? She said, shrugging her shoulders. I had nothing to lose. That evening, Dana was setting the table when John walked in. She reached out and threw her arms around her husband's neck, preparing for their welcoming kiss. When he reached behind her to grab her ass and pull her to his crotch, Dana wrinkled her nose. Oh, careful, honey, I'm really sensitive. She could see the immediate concern on his face. What's the matter, darling? Are you all right? I'm fine, darling, it's just... Well, we've been having a lot of sex lately, and I'm starting to get annoyed. We really need to take a break, if you don't mind. Well, of course I don't mind, dear. The whole idea of lovemaking is to make each other feel good, not bad. Dana smiled at him. He couldn't tell what was behind her beautiful lifted lips, but she wondered how she could ever think of cheating on her wonderful husband. Across the street, Gloria made it clear to Tim that he was going to be very lucky. As usual, their lovemaking began with kissing and then a little nipple play before he maneuvered between her legs and inserted himself. Sure enough, he managed to last his usual 20 minutes before they were both done. Gloria came to her senses first and looked at her husband. He was still out of breath. She looked up into his face with a slight chuckle. Tim put his arm around her waist and began to encourage her. Unfortunately, she wasn't as young as she used to be and her knees were starting to hurt. She leaned forward and kissed her husband. Do you remember when I was lying on my side and you took me from behind? Yes, I remember. Gloria turned her back to him. Tim was no fool. He slid behind his beautiful wife's back, found her opening, and began a long, slow stroke. Mmm, she purred, closing her eyes and resting her head on his shoulder. It had been a long time since they had last used this position, and the novelty made Gloria forget herself in ecstasy for a few minutes. The next morning, Gloria, crossing the street with a broad smile, walked a little cautiously. She knocked twice and entered. Dana looked at her. Well, you look chipper this morning. Tim and I made love for over an hour last night, she announced. We haven't done that in two years. Well, congratulations. Yeah, Tim was dragging a little when he got up for work, but I feel great, she said gleefully. What about you and Superman? I assume you had another marathon session? No, I told him I needed a break. I guess I'm the one crying, Uncle, she laughed. Epilogue. Although Gloria secretly felt jealous of Dana, she never let it be known or interfere with their friendship. From personal experience, they both came to value their husbands more than they had before, and neither of them thought about sleeping with other men. Both John and Tim never complained about the strict sexual schedule, although Tim was thinking of taking up yoga.